Hello, everyone. Welcome to Everything Iconic. I'm here with two powerhouse women. I'm so incredibly excited. I'm a little bit nervous. I feel like a little nervous. Um, Catherine Power Don't and Cameron nervous. Diaz, uh, how are you both doing today? We're so good. I mean, it's Fantastic. crazy, crazy week and in, in, in time right now, but um, we're good. And thank you so much for having us. Right. I'm holding the white, Aveline. It's so incredibly good. It, I was trying to explain, it's like very clean to me. Like that's the word that I keep thinking of. And uh, I don't know if this is scientific, but I did not have a hangover after drinking a bottle. And so <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, but it's <laughs> delicious. Um, and you guys have, uh, the red is out now. We have the red. Um, how did this whole venture get started? Kind of walk me through the process of you two starting to work together on the wine. Sure. Well, we, you know, we are uh, friends first and um, Cameron and I met through her sister-in-law, Nicole Ritchie, who's been one of my best friends for about 20 years. And, you know, we, uh, were just drinking wine one day at Cameron's house. And, you know, we started talking about how everything in our life has gotten healthier. You know, we've traded our groceries for organic, our, you know, personal care products, our household cleaning products, our skincare, our makeup. And as we were deciding whether or not to open another bottle of wine, we said, you know, are these grapes organic? And this is just grapes, right? And and we turned around the bottle and we were reminded that, you know, wine is one of the only consumables where there's no nutritional facts, there's, you know, um, no ingredient list and really no transparency. So we said, you know, I wonder if there's a way to, you know, make wine better for us, right? So, so ultimately we can drink more. Is there a way to clean that up too? Like we have in other areas of our life. And we really set off on this, you know, two year journey together to learn about first the winemaking process. Right, right. And it's, it's so uh, delicious. What are you guys like as drinkers, though? Like, are you, you know, there's always different kind of tipsy people. So are you like a dramatic tipsy person, Cameron? Are you a, a crier or a wild goofy drinker? I mean, I don't know. I think it depends on the situation, <laughs> right, right, right. but I feel like, you know, I'm at the point now where tipsy is like too far for me. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm, I'm like, it's, I've, I've reached my limit if I get to a tip, you know? Right, right. Um, so, but I do, if you ask my husband, he'll probably give you uh, a better idea of how things really go. But I think that that's the thing that happens <laughs> when you're drinking. You actually don't know what you're what what's happening you know how yeah. far you've gone this pandemic i've been drinking so much obviously like so many of us and i find that i just hop online and i'm like online shopping and then like, the next day <laughs> the next day or the next week or something i'm getting all these boxes and my boyfriend's like what did you order now and it's like i don't even know let's we'll see <laughs> well it's open together <laughs> Catherine, what kind of a uh, drinker are you you know i i'm the same way as cameron like i don't even remember the last time i was tipsy but um because A, I pace myself, and B, I drink a lot of the Aveline white wine, which is actually pretty low alcohol content for a wine. It's, I think, 11.5%. But um, I'm sure some people would say I get more outgoing, you know, when, I, when I'm drinking wine. I'm a pretty shy person, a little socially Catherine, awkward. you know what I just realized? We've never what? actually been drunk together. Okay, what's going like, on? You need to... No, I seriously, I don't think we've ever... Have we ever- I, I mean, it's not like we have like these stories of going out and getting and partying and having right because like, we met later in life. And yeah, if we were, I don't remember. No, I mean, so you know, our our like drinking is more like that social. Have a glass while we're sitting. You know and why? And like, you know why we're not because we eat so much. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we're always eating with our food. We're always <laughs> eating. We're not slamming, pounding wine on its own. Yeah, You're but right. you know what? Maybe maybe New Year's. Right, maybe, right. Hey, why not? Let's take it up a notch. <laughs> I, I was thinking like about you guys and I was thinking, you know, when I'm with my girlfriends and stuff, it's like we're drinking wine and watching the holiday. And I was like thinking, uh. what, are, what are you guys drinking wine and watching? Like what, do, will you sit and watch the holiday? I mean, Cameron, it's the best movie of all time. You know oh, that. I love that. You love I, I mean, I'm a big fan of Nancy Myers. That's why I did the movie. So I, I appreciate so much that how people love it, but I actually haven't seen it in 15 years. So I don't know. 
Do you notice though online, like everyone, I feel like I constantly see the, there's a meme of you drinking, of course, yeah. uh, in the market and then of you in bed. Um, yeah. And it, it I mean, that's up. relatable. That's so very relatable. iconic. Yeah. <laughs> and I just, and I, watched, think- I watched it again the other day and I noticed you, your character always had Pepsi at AC. Um, yeah. She I, was I had very never anxious. noticed that before. Yeah. That yeah. that that character was very Catherine Power, by the way. I was just gonna say it's very Catherine Power. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my god. Well, so what I want to know, like, what kind of do you guys like rom coms? What do you watch? What are you enjoying? I represent Bravo for Aveline. So yes, she does. where Cameron, you know, prefers like the RuPaul Drag Race. Uh, yeah, so I my, am very very deep with with Bravo. Okay, um, Catherine, yes. what's your favorite franchise? First of all, favorite housewife. I need to know that stuff. And well, Cameron, then the I'm going to best... need to know your favorite drag queen. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, there's so many. <laughs> In my opinion, the best television show that's ever been on the air is Vanderpump Rules. Like, she hands down, stuff. like, there's nothing, there's not a single piece of programming to me that has compared. And so... I am a huge Vanderpump fan. Um, I also go back and I rewatch these shows from the very beginning, first season, and go all the way through. And I find myself doing that a lot now with the Housewives because I'm just not as drawn to the modern casting, to be honest. Like, I love, you know, give me like an Adrian Maloof and like (laughs) Taylor Armstrong and like all of those people from the OG BH. Um, Mm -hmm. and I just feel like we've gotten away from that a little bit. And, and so I found, found myself, you know, during the pandemic, I went through and watched Orange County from the very beginning. Um, I'm very, you know, drawn to the, to the Southern California, um, uh, cast because I think I'm just like more familiar with it. I, you know, I was born in Orange County. A lot of them remind me of like family members. So, uh, it's a little bit fun for me. Right. Right. And Cameron, talk to me about Drag Race. Who do you, who do you like? Well, you know, Drag Race saved my life. Like, oh, tell me as, more. Far as, I, as far as I'm concerned, Drag is, um, you know, uh, I found it at a time where I felt really overwhelmed by the world. And I just felt like there was, um, you know, what, what are people doing? Like, how do we survive this, you know? And when I found RuPaul Drag Race, I was flying home um, from a girlfriend of mine. Uh, her, her father had passed away and I was coming home from being with her um, in Florida. And I, this was like a year, uh, a year ago, a year ago, exactly, actually. And I, um, I watched two, ep- three episodes on the plane. And for the first time in so long, I was just like laughing out loud on, and I think it was like season 11 for the first two, uh, three um, episodes of season 11. And I was just, my mind was blown. And then as I I went home immediately and started watching from season one and I realize, I mean, and you know, it's everything like season one, two, three, you, you know, as a, as a drag race fan, you just go like, that is some crazy, <laughs> you know, like, the, so you know the two, like, it's so good. And the fearlessness, that was the thing that was so like, these are, are they, these women are like, they are their truest form, like watching a drag queen be a drag queen. They're not making any apologies. They're taking so much risk. Their art form is what keeps them alive. And really, truly, because they get to be who they are through their art. And, um, you know, they, they suffer from, you know, abuse from, uh, you know, their families disowning them, um, the society, they're the most marginalized of, of all of our culture. Um, and that culture is the most marginalized. And I feel like they just are persevere and they are so true to themselves. And it's, I just go like, if, and if these, these Queens can bring forward that in such a high level and they're so talented in Mm -hmm. everything that they do, I'm just blown away at the art that they create and in in an instant, you know, and that RuPaul has created this um, and been able to bring it to the world and been without any apologies and be just, this is who we are. It makes me feel like anything's possible. Like 
we'll all be okay. Like people, we, we can adapt. We will persevere. We, as long as we stay true to ourselves. Yeah. It's interesting too, with drag races, I feel like it, it, especially when it moved to VH1, it opened the door for so many more people to see this art form in this world that hadn't seen it before. And totally, you know, I hear from people all the time and, and you mentioned the Queens too. And they're also so inspirational. I, I had a Shangela on the show recently. Oh, I love Shangela. It's I like, love she's right here. All right. Wait, oh my God. Is, yeah. You're so good. I know. So good. I'm Bob. Beautiful. I love Bob and you know, Eureka, the three of them are so magic together. I just saw um, Eure- Eureka must live down the street or something. I saw her walking and I, I almost like stopped and shouted, her, but I stopped myself, but uh, <laughs> I saw her walking. I was so just, excited. There's so many incredible, you know, Queens that I'm, I've also watched all of, I watched the UK. I watched dra- uh, Canada. I've watched, um, I'm doing Dutch, the Dutch drag race. Oh my God. I, I love that. Anything really deep. drag race. <laughs> super, deep. I've done all the all stars. I'm like, I, I put it on in my kitchen for while I'm cooking dinner, pour myself a glass of Aveline, whatever, red, white, rose. And I just have, I cook my dinner. I watch my episodes like Catherine over and over. I'll watch seasons over and over. And w- one of my favorite though, like with Catherine is on our way to Europe to go meet our providers for who we were going to try to get to, to be our providers for Aveline. She sets up in her, in her seat with her computer and she turns <laughs> on <laughs> the first thing up is like, what? It's like, I think it was Beverly Hills. I think it was Housewives, right? Yes, uh, it was Beverly it Hills was, starting from the and, beginning. And that. starting from the beginning and she just put her ear pods in and she was just like all snuggled up with her blanket and she was so happy. She's like, I'm in my happy place. This is my comfort zone. Here I am. And right. she fell asleep. <laughs> Catherine, you know Bravo is my happy place too, and I find nothing oh, yeah. more nothing more relaxing. And you mentioned the first few seasons of Vanderpump Rules, and I believe that uh, I believe they're Shakespearean. Like I don't even think yeah. scripted fair is that it good. Could never it could script never anything that good. Never. Yeah. And with with Housewives, <laughs> I always find it fascinating because I find there's such a lack of representation for women, particularly above a certain age, on television, scripted or otherwise. That's very and true. I, I worship Nancy Myers too. I like. I, I think she's the best. And I know she's has said before, she doesn't know if she's interested in making more movies and stuff. And I'm like, Nancy, we need you like these. There's not a lot of stories for or about women uh, over a certain age and on housewives. Yes. They're dramatic and there's fights and drama and all that stuff, but we're also seeing women over 50 talk about their sex lives and, and relationships and husbands passing and divorces and kids. And I just think uh, it's, it's an important sort of, thing for us to be able to see on television. Um, yeah, it's a good point. Yeah. It really is. Uh, Cameron, you mentioned last year you were in a tough spot and I'm finding this year is just so hard and you're both mothers and I, I worship moms too, but I'm like, how is, how are you guys getting through all of this? Is, are you just like so exhausted? I mean, I think it's just for, for being a new mom, being able to be home every moment that I can be with my child is just such a blessing. I feel so fortunate that this, I I think about if we were doing just even this interview, we probably would be in a studio somewhere. I would have had to leave, you know, however many half an hour beforehand and get there or an hour, whatever it might be, sit in traffic and be away from her and have to come home and she's, you know, miss every aspect of, but other, but now I just get to go down the stairs and and see her, you know, um, whenever I want. So I feel really lucky that way. Yeah. Catherine, how have you been handling everything? You know, my son is just over three. um, And so he, he doesn't really know what's going on. I mean, he's, he doesn't really know any different. I asked him, do you remember, when mommy used to go to work every day and he said, no. So he doesn't really? even remember. Yeah. Before oh, March wow. um, that I used to leave him. I mean, since he was a tiny baby to, to go to work, to travel. I mean um, it's, it's sad that he wasn't able to start school in person this year. This was meant to be his first year of school, but um, you know, I think we're both lucky in that our kids are so young right now. Um, I yeah. feel for parents that have, you know, older kids and in, in are doing the Zoom school while trying to work and all of that. It just, um, it just feels insurmountable. But, you know, this year is really all about survival. 
um, and you know, we'll we'll get through it, and then we can start, you know, focusing on sort of growth and improvement. I think. Yeah, I keep thinking about it as the year of self care. It's like whatever you got to do that, whatever makes you happy, that makes you feel good. I think it's okay, whether it be online shopping or drinking a bottle of wine <laughs> safely, of course. But uh, yeah, you know, you're both entrepreneurs too, and and Catherine, maybe you could speak to this of. Uh, how do you decide what to take on or what to tackle next? Because, you know, you've been involved with so many businesses. How do you yeah. make that decision? You know, I always think that great businesses start from a personal need. So, and that is very true, uh, you know, from uh, of, of Avaline. We really set out just to learn more about the, the winemaking process and all, what went into wine that we wanted to consume and as we learned, you know, we were very compelled to share what we learned with, um, you know, consumers who were just like us and also to provide a solution. And so I think, you know, that's true also of, of my, a lot of my other brands, you know, I have Versed, which is a clean drugstore skincare brand. It was, you know, coming from this, this idea that we still buy so much beauty in drugstores, but there just weren't enough clean options. Um, or, you know, when I started who, what, where back in 2006, knowing I was spending all my time on the computer, but I couldn't get magazine quality content. So, um, I, I really think that's kind of where it comes from. And then if you can prove that, you know, more people outside of you want it, it's probably a really good idea. You mentioned who, what, where, and you started that in 2006, I believe, right? Yes. Did you anticipate where influencer culture sort of went from, from when you started that to sort of where it is now? You know, it's interesting. When when we started Who, What, Where, we had just shifted from a time when people like Anna Wintour and Carl Lagerfeld, they would influence the way that we would, you know, us regular people would dress, right? It was the designers would make something that would go down the runway. Anna would put it into Vogue. We would all, you know, buy it to some degree, and there was a shift around 2004, 2005, where all of a sudden there started to be so much celebrity street style coverage. Um, you know, uh, it was kind of the rise of the paparazzi and blogs like, you know, Perez Hilton and X-17. And um, all of a sudden we started to see fashion through the lens of celebrity and, and you know, celebrities although they were, you know, famous and, and probably had more money than everybody, they were a lot more, you know, and they made it a lot easier to understand fashion than seeing it on a, you know, six foot model. So I think that was the first kind of shift in influence was going from the big fashion houses and the magazine editors to this, this group of real people. And then from there, we saw, you know, the rise of the blogger where, um, girls all over the country could create their own page and their own platform. And all of a sudden we're sharing, you know, fashion tips and ideas from different countries across the globe. And then from there it shifted to Instagram and to TikTok and all of that. And I, I have to say, I thought the, the blogger thing would last longer, you know, but it quickly shifted to, to Instagram and some of the other platforms, but it's, 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 there's always been an influencer. I think it's just sort of who that influencer is has changed over the last 10 years. And Cameron, you're new to Instagram. I've been loving it. You've been posting some cooking videos. I love it. You just did a lemon pasta and I, I was texting my boyfriend. I was like, we have to make that this weekend. Um, but were you hesitant to get onto Instagram and social media? How has it been? Yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's been, you know, baby steps, dipping my toe in. Um, I'm just, you know, I don't come from this era of, you know, uh, sharing my life. That's always been something that I've been very protective of because I come from the era of tabloid invasion into my privacy and people stalking me and following me. And so I've, my instinct has always been to protect myself from, you know, not having the world know what I'm doing or where I'm going or what I'm doing at any given point. Um, just so that I could exist, you know, so the idea of like putting myself actually offering it up to people is not, it doesn't, it doesn't, didn't settle right, you know, for me, especially since I had been away for so long. When I, when I sort of stopped doing films back in 2000, 
2014. It was just when Instagram was coming out. And I played with it a little bit as for fun um, in the very beginning towards like my last movie that I did, which was um, Annie. And I, you know, it was fine. Nobody really was paying that much att attention. I, I remember going like, what's a hashtag? People were like, hashtag this, hashtag that. I was like, what's a hashtag? You know, now it's just like, you have to hashtag something. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and so I feel like, um, you know, there, the, there, I didn't really sort of dive into it. It was never a tool that was useful to me as um, an actor. I didn't build my career upon it. I didn't promote my work on it. Um, it was just something that existed that I wasn't a part of when I left. I just went goodbye. Right. Um, so coming back into it, obviously, I understand. I'm not. I'm. I, I'm. Can tell that it's important. Obviously, I'm not an idiot. Um, I just uh, <laughs> and I see what Catherine how she's you know born her her uh, her businesses through digital platforms. And um, of course, I'm learning every day about how to utilize it. But I had to find something that was authentic to me, you know, I couldn't just, you know, I, I go, I've, I've, obvi uh, I've had a lot of conversations with our team of like, how do we put this into the world? What's relevant to Aveline? Um, and what is something that I'm comfortable doing? For me, cooking is the easiest thing that I could ever do anytime because it's just what I do. I don't have to think about it. It's not something that I, you know, am concerned about whether or not people understand it. It's just like, this is what I do. I cook. That's, right. there's no question for me. Um, and it's the, probably the truest to me as well. So, um, that was easy to do. Have you noticed sort of now that you're on Instagram, are you aware, maybe this is a stupid or silly question, but like, are you aware of how much we, me, me specifically, but also in general, we miss you on screen? Oh. I mean, I, I, I feel like within particularly the gay community, it's like I'm constantly having conversations. It's like, we want Cameron back. What is Cameron oh, coming back? Oh, that's sweet. And so oh, thank you. When we see you on social media doing like a cooking video or something, it is so exciting. Um. I think just because That's you're, nice. you're such a, a symbol for so much joy for a lot of us, because you've been in so many movies that have really transcended and, and become, you know, like the holiday is comfort food movie. It's right. like a war, right, right. you know, or, right. or um, <laughs> my best friend's wedding. It's like, these are just movies we watch over and over again. And so I wonder if you get a sense that um, we're craving I, you to do a movie again. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like I get a lot of nice, um, comments that I've seen when I've looked like sometimes I want to just know if people think the food looks good <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? well like, it does that does they, that's true too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, that pasta I'm not even kidding you that pasta looks so good it's yeah. so yummy it's just yeah. like comfort like I I love a co good comfort pasta um but I I don't know I guess so like the people you know are really nice and saying oh I you know it's good to see you um on the you know here on Instagram so those are nice things, but it's, it's so, t it really is kind of hard for me to kind of think of um, doing anything like I did before, you know, life is just so different for me now, right, right. you know, but I, I, that's not to say, I never say never about anything, believe me. Cameron, we need it. Can you just do one? <laughs> just do one for me. Just the flu. Yeah. Uh, you know, Danny, I'll, 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 I'll look around and see if there's anything that tickles me Can't and we then just I'll do come and... <laughs> We'll do like a char another Charlie's Angels, or mm -hmm. I have this idea for my best friend's wedding sequel where um, there's like maybe a divorce involved. I don't know. We can spitball it, but I Ooh. feel like I, like uh, I, I kind of wish I'd do a Charlie's Angels again, and then I could just like work out for eight hours a day, and I'd be so happy. I saw that. I know you guys did a, a, a reunion on Drew's show, which Drew's show is just like a boost of serotonin. Every time I put it on, it's like, isn't it so great? She's oh, so great. It's so good. And seeing I, the three of you together was so exciting um, because it was yeah, really fun. We, love, we loved it. Um, Catherine talking about Instagram. Is it, uh, what's it like now with, with Aveline, you're able to use Instagram to sell, whereas probably 10 years ago, you weren't using social media um, maybe as much. And, and I almost think now, and you could speak to this more probably, it's like 
businesses don't even need commercials traditionally because you can use social media. So I, I feel like marketing budgets can be lower. And I don't know, have you noticed that? Yeah, I think honestly, the most valuable thing to me that comes from Instagram is the one-to-one connection with the consumer. So that ability to have a direct interaction with them, you know, you you can't do that at, through a television network or, um, you know, a, a billboard as they pass by. It's like you're literally able to DM them or have them DM you and give their opinion on something, get feedback in real time. And for us, I think that's truly the most valuable because it helps us to create the products and the assets that that we use in marketing to, um, you know, they're ultimately going to be successful and be what the consumers want. So I think, um, yes, it's obviously a great marketing tool, but really the, 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 the insights and the, and the connection that you're able to create is, is truly the special part. That's something that I think has been really, you know, eye opening to me as well through this process of Aveline, you know, um, our community is really important to us. Like we love being engaged with them. And it is also something like I can, I can go to comments and I can comment back to somebody if I like something, you know, like over Halloween, it was cute. A lot of people that sent in, you know, or, or ca- um, tagged me for their costumes for like Charles Angels or the mask. And just being able to kind of repost those things and say, great job or whatever. It's fun like that too. So, you know, but um, having that connection is really great. You know, I've been a pop culture junkie my entire life. I I remember just going to the video store and renting as many movies as I could. I had a dollar video store uh, back in Ohio that I used to go to in Seoul. And and, uh, having, growing up and, and sort of putting celebrities really on a pedestal, which I'm not saying is the right thing to do, but it was just sort of, how I lived and and uh, now to be able to have access to celebrities and businesses um, where you can comment back and forth, I think it makes the brand so much more personable. And I feel like mm-hmm. just being able to connect with the owner of a, of a wine company or, or whatever the company is, I, I feel like it makes you brand loyal in a way that you couldn't be before. Um, and I, I think that's really exciting. Well, uh, the, the, cool, the cool thing about... Um, you know, having uh, that relationship with our our consumers that it really it, it was born out of Catherine and my friendship, right? So this was a community driven, friendship driven brand, and so to be able to have a community that's connected as well and feels like they're a part of something, and and you know that they're all in it together um, is also really gratifying as well. What's Nicole think of it? I know, Catherine, you said you were friends with her your, for a while. And um, what does she think of all this? She's a, she is a huge fan and a, a great beneficiary of our, the fruits of our labor. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, last night we were at dinner. We had dinner last night and we were, um, and she was drinking the white and I was drinking the red. And we were, and I also, um, well, I'll tell you later. I'm but having some. We, Oh, good. I love that you're straight out of the box. You know so good. It is what it is. <laughs> that, it is 2020. It is. Um, that's right. Um, and she, uh, we were drinking and we we're just talking about how good the wine was and so easy to drink. And, and uh, we were with another girlfriend and she was like, should I be filming this right now? Because it's just like, when you drink it, you can't, you're, I, I'm always surprised, even though I have it often, of how yeah, much I love how it. Good it. Like is. how yeah. good it is. I mean, this is going to sound like I'm bullshitting you guys, but I really believe it to be a very delicious wine. Like it's, I just had some, it's very smooth, clean. It's crisp. The, the, the white is so crisp. It's so perfectly dry without any, you know, harsh bite on it. It's just like the perfect amount of like break. Yeah. And and I, I recently had another brand send me a box of wine and, and it was not good at all. And so um, I appreciate when the wine is good. And I like a twist top too. I like a good twist top. Well, listen, we're very, very discerning drinkers in our life. So we, we were only going to create a quality product because it's what we want to drink. You know, this is not sort of a celebrity wine brand where Cameron has slapped her name on, or we just put a strategy around it and a label and that's it. We, you know, virtually and actually knocked on doors of some of our favorite 
you know, vineyards and wineries around the, the world um, to find the absolute best wine in each, you know, category that we knew we wanted to release. And the, we definitely put quality first. And I, I think, you know, hopefully that uh, is clear. Was it a big discussion for the price point? Because I feel like it's, a, it, it doesn't, um, how do I say that? It, it doesn't feel cheap at all, but it also isn't outrageous. It's like a, um, I feel like it's great as like an everyday kind of wine, but then also it feels like it could be a little fancier. Does that make sense? Yes, that's, I mean, Inga. that's what I, I love <laughs> to do, you know, with, with all of my brands really is take something slightly more aspirational and make it more accessible. And, you know, because we were able to, you know, so quickly, you know, get into so many retail doors, we're able to, you know, um, basically drive down the, the cost to the consumer by having such volume immediately. So, um, yeah, it was very carefully thought out and researched and, you know, we really wanted to fill this certain, you know, spot in the market where we felt like there needed to be better, higher quality, cleaner product, um, you know, in this range. And what's next? You just came out with the red. Um, do you plan on expanding even more or are you happy with the three? We definitely do. I mean, we're having a lot of fun kind of planning what's next and, you know, really engaging a lot with our community on Instagram to figure out what is going to happen next. And um, so if you follow us, I'm sure you've seen us ask a lot of questions lately and um, you'll definitely be on the, the list to know as soon as we, uh, we release something. I'd like a spirit, you know, like a, um, like a liquor or something. That's okay. Cool. That's what I want. Um, okay. Noted. So I, I have some pop culture, sort of a little more general pop culture questions, um, sort of a lightning round, but feel free to take as long as you want. Uh, Catherine, if you yes. were choosing for People Magazine, Sexiest Man Alive, who would you choose? Oh my God. And how, you can't be your husband. It has to be like, you know, some actor or something. Ooh, I am so out of that, like, <laughs> Hollywood loop right now. If you're not on Bravo, I don't know you. <laughs> so, so how, about, how about, okay, that's a better question, Catherine. Sexiest man on Bravo. Like, is there a house husband or, or a, you know, someone? You know who I'm obsessed with? I think he's, like, such a great guy. I hope he is in real life. Randall Emmett. Oh, Lala. Randall. I don't know that <laughs> not, he is. Not, not Randall. Not, He's not <laughs> like in a, not like in a, you know, I guess I just, I love his personality and he just seems like such a good guy and really has her back and like came into the group and just like put his arms around him. And I, I just hope that's true in real life. Right. I, I, um, I you warmed seem up a little, to I'm not, yeah, I'm not as little, convinced. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not on the um, same page as you, Catherine, on that one. Who but. else do we like? Who do you like? Yeah. Oh, who do I like on Bravo? Yeah. You know, I like, um, t Tom Sandoval's gorgeous, I think, in terms of Vanderpump rules. Uh, I think, um, there was an, uh, uh, Potomac housewife, Juan, I find really sexy. Uh, house husband. Okay. Yeah. House yeah. husband. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cameron, if you were going to prison, which obviously you're not, but what would your last meal be? <laughs> Let's hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers crossed. We'll see. Um, what would be my last meal? To, like going in because I'm not going to have a delicious meal before it, while I'm in there. Is that kind of thing? Yeah. Like your favorite meal. Well, I love fried chicken. I love me some fried chicken and I would, or like, Empanizado, so like a breaded chicken or breaded steak Cuban style with some black beans and rice and an avocado salad. Oh, I kill that. Mm -hmm. um, those are like kind of comfort foods for me. Right. Uh, Catherine, Jessica or Ashley Simpson? Oh, Jessica. No offense, Ashley. I love Ashley, but Jessica... Yeah for me is really special. Yeah. That newlyweds era was just, um, it was yes. great TV. Yeah. yeah. I, Nicole recently. <laughs> around last around night, as, as recent she, as last night. Uh, what is she, she watches <laughs> old newlyweds on uh, YouTube. Oh my God. Which I do too, I, Nicole Richie. I, I've done that before. I've the two that I go back to on YouTube because it's the only place you can find 
is um, newlyweds. And then I've gone way back to rich girls on MTV. Uh, Do you remember that? Yes, Sally of course. Hilfiger? Yeah. Available oh, on YouTube. You know, the people always ask me because I, I, I'm the biggest newlyweds fan and everyone asks where to watch it. And they do have the episodes. Some of them are split up a little bit, but they're all on yeah. YouTube. And, and I'm so, so fascinated good. by the fashion of that era too. Is there something from oh, that yeah. time that you think like, oh, that needs to make a comeback? Or, I mean, I always love Jessica. it does, but <laughs> I really do treasure the memories of the Frankie B. Jeans and, you know, the little jet uh, tank tops and the um, rhinestone belt buckles and all the butterflies and the Uggs and the, this is just, it's, yeah. you know, too yeah, I, soon. Too do you soon. remember Jessica had that yellow shawl? That was my favorite. Yes. It was like she wore it so She loved times. a shawl. Yeah. Okay. Cameron, Julia Roberts thoughts. Julia Roberts, my thoughts. Yeah. I, I love Julia. She's, she's great. Yeah. She's amazing. She's, she's Julia Roberts. I know. I know. <laughs> She's the best. Uh, Catherine, favorite Mariah Carey song? Oh, Why Are You So Obsessed With Me? Classic. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know, this is a question. I don't know. I have this in the lightning round, and it doesn't make sense as a lightning round question. But Cameron, I mentioned Julie Roberts and My Best Friend's Wedding, and it is. I, I was thinking about Rupert Everett's career, and after that movie... Um, he had he had said, you know, he didn't get the role sort of he expected. And I I wonder if you could speak to, I don't know if this makes any sense, Rupert Everett's uh, sort of career path after My Best Friend's Wedding, because you were also brilliant in that movie. And and I know he, he had was mentioned- amazing in that movie. Yeah. He made that movie. He was like, that character started off as like just the beginning of, um, you know, telling him, go, go find him, you know. And he he was just so you know so Rupert and um the 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 relationship just was so clearly a uh, an asset to the film uh that they wove him into the rest of the sh- of the movie that character and so I felt like it was it was so important to me just seeing gay representation mm-hmm. at that time because it Especially. was 97 and there was nothing mm-hmm. and so I just felt it was it was so important and I I always mm-hmm. wished he had taken off in ways that I sort of wanted him to, if that makes sense. I agree. I, I love Rupert. I think he's so special. And I just saw him. Um, I saw everybody. We did a reunion back um, last beginning of last year, I think, um, 2019. Um, and it was so great to see everyone. And he was so lovely. And he's just such a gentleman and um, hilarious. We had so much fun together. Now he's really special. I, I, I wish that um, I, I can't really speak to it because I don't really know. Like the world is so strange and the industry is so fickle. And, um, you know, I think that maybe they're culturally, maybe it was ahead of its time sort of having him in that role. Um, but I don't know exactly what happened, but I think, you know, he's just, he's fantastic. Just the, I mean, all of you, all of you in that movie, I just feel like it was so perfect. I feel like no one could have played your role. No one else could have played Julia's role. It was just um, so great. Uh, awesome. Now, I finally just want to end this. Catherine, I mentioned when we were getting on this call that, you know, 2020 has been tough. And I was talking to my family earlier this week and uh, my mom and I were talking. We didn't know when we we're going to get to see each other because of the pandemic and all, uh, so many things going on. And I was really bummed out about it. And that night I watched In Her Shoes, which is a- another favorite oh, of mine. Oh, and okay. um, at the end of that movie, there's this, uh, or throughout the movie, actually, your character, Cameron, references this E.E. E. Cummings poem. Mm-hmm. And I had this really like sort of aha moment. And so I'm going to get emo for a moment. I just thought I would like wrap this up. Uh, just by uh, mm-hmm. sharing this poem, because as I was watching in her shoes, it, it sort of struck me. Um, just although my family's far away, we all sort of carry each other, and I know this time is so hard for people, and a lot of people are disconnected, and it's 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 really strange time. And um, so I just wanted to end it with this. I love it. Uh, I carry your heart with me. I carry it in my heart. I'm never without it. Anywhere I go, you go, my dear. And whatever is done uh, by only me is your doing, my darling. 
I fear no fate, for you are my fate, my sweet. I want no world, for beautiful you are my world, my true. Here is the deepest secret nobody knows. Here is the root of the root and the bud of the bud and the sky of the sky of a tree called life, which grows higher than soul can hope or mind can hide. And this is the wonder that's keeping the stars apart. I carry your heart. I carry it in my heart. And I can't hear that, that poem or read that poem without crying. It's like so beautiful. It's just like, so you, it takes you right back to the people you hold dearest and that real true, um, those people make up who the fabric of your heart. You know, I always, I always think of like your heart as this, these pieces that are almost like a, a tapestry that all the people in your life are woven into them and sewn in patch by patch as you go through life and they heal your heart and they open your heart and they do, they, they hold your heart and you hold them in your heart. And I always, whenever I hear or read that poem, it just makes me think of all those people. And it's just like, Oh, it's so good. It's such a good reminder right now that although people can't be together physically, um, Mm -hmm you know, we're, we're turning each other around. Yeah. And people who have passed too. Mm -hmm. So I'm sorry to end it on that emo sad note. I hope I didn't bum you guys out. I love it. um, I just want to thank you. Um, Catherine, you're such an inspiring woman. Cameron, you're such an inspiring woman. And uh, I've, I've been a fan of you, Cameron, my entire life. And so I thank you for all that you've given us. Am I old enough to be your mommy? No, no, no. <laughs> but I remember I was like, I probably am actually. No, not at all. No, but I remember just being obsessed with the mask. Like I, when I was a teenager, right. I was like around yeah. a teenager. I don't know when how old I was. No, mask, you weren't a teenager when the mask. When did that came come out? out? Ninety five. I guess I was. I was ten. Was it ninety five? 94, 90, 95, Yeah. Yeah. I was born in eighty five. End of eighty five. There you so. go. I can't believe I just so. gave my age on air. I don't. A woman oh. never gives away her age. <laughs> <laughs> so I am not old enough to be your mother. Well, I could be. Could be. Um, Aveline, you guys, everywhere. It's going to be the drink of the holiday season. We're drinking it for Christmas, Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, New Year's, um, and into 2021. It's delicious. I encourage everyone to go pick it up. Follow Aveline on social media. Um, it's, it's the only thing we're drinking, and we love it, and it's truly delicious. So thank you. Um, and thank, thank you, you both for coming on the show. I really, from the bottom of my heart, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank it you, was Danny. a lovely time, Danny. Thank you so much for your your enthusiasm. It's lovely. I appreciate we'll it. Thank you, you guys. Stay safe, and we'll um, you yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.